My eyes are behind, looking right down the line, allowing me to see where I want the putter to go and extending it to the target. An optimum roll is when the ball starts out with the equator going almost level to the ground and slowly turning over. And that's what four degrees aloft at impact will do. I like it right off of my heel here. And this allows me a chance for the putter to have reached the bottom of the arc and actually start ascending at impact. It's already reached the bottom of the arc and it's slightly coming up and the four degrees of loft gets the ball just out of its impression on the green and rolling properly to the hole. Your hands have to continue to the target. All good putters have their hands continue down into the target line. There are three things we can do to get the face to square up the first thing is we can get a heel shafted putter closes more like I have with wearing the putter face up quicker. The second thing, strengthen your grip. The top hand should be a little bit stronger. Promote the closing of the face. This allows us to square up the club face and forces us to follow down the target line. Otherwise, we'll pull it. This gives the putter head a little more time to square up and impact. So a stronger grip can help us or allow us to extend better down the target line. And the third thing, we can move the ball slightly forward in our stance. So if I putt off of the heel normally, I might move it up just an inch and it promotes more of a pull, more of a closing of the putter face to help me square it up. A forward press, it allows us to accomplish the one goal is to continue our hands to the target. Keep it minimal so that if I'm able to put the ball on my instep, I can put a slight forward press just that tiny movement there gives us the sensation we can keep our hands ahead, but not de-lofting the putter so much it changes the impact condition. 90% has to do with face angle, where the putter face is aimed. Dave Pels and I developed this device called the Putting Tutor, and this device is what has allowed me to work on my alignment. It has a line down the middle of this triangle, as I put the face up against it, I know exactly where I'm aimed. I train my eyes to look at that tee. I train my body and shoulders and feet to aim at that tee so that I'm working on my alignment with my body, but most specifically with the putter face. We have moved back a couple of holes so that it's a little bit wider and it's closer to impact. But ultimately, your goal is to be able to use the pro setting and get every ball started online and through the marbles. If I make a good stroke, I should be able to get this ball through the tutor and into the hole if I have proper speed. I can line up perfect. I can aim perfectly. I can start it on the correct line. And if I hit it too easy, I'm going to miss it low. I didn't get the right speed. And if I hit it too hard, I'm going to miss it high training our eyes to line up properly, to read the green properly, our touch to feel the proper speed. At three feet, we can make 97 to 100 percent. But if we move back just one foot to four feet, that percentage drops down to below 90. And if we move back another 12 inches to five feet, that percentage drops down to 75 percent. And at six feet, it falls to 55%. We need to get every putt and every chip inside this circle. We want to go back 25% through 75%. We have a tendency to get a little handsy. We have to keep our grip pressure light to combat that. So I keep my grip pressure light. I go back 25 and go through 75, creating a rhythm with it. One, I try to keep the steps the same. Two, 25, 75, three, four, five. After five, I take the balls out of the hole, getting back in the rhythm, six. Moving over, stepping the same way, seven, eight, nine, and 10. When I'm on the golf course, pressure putt, step to the side, and create the same rhythm that this drill, just to keep that rhythm in my head. Show you how to set up the three foot drill. I take a seven iron, I'm trying to extend my three foot circle out. I lay the club down and I just pop a tee in the end. I reach over, lay it down, pop a tee in, reach over and pop a tee in.
six foot drill. My goal is to get around this circle one time. Still thinking 2575, the same technique as the three foot drill. Again, that's my foundation. I try to start at a straight putt. I'm able to see the difference in a hook putt, in a slice putt, and it helps me read the greens out on the course. It's not the easiest to pick up the read. In fact, this you can really see how much it breaks. So I'm playing that six inches outside the edge on these six foot putts. I'm watching, trying to learn the read because I know when I get out on the course, that's gonna be critical. There we go, the numbers aren't gonna lie. We're down to about 55, 60% from six feet and that's about what I'm making. In fact, it'd be nice if I could even do a little better. So I'm following the read. I'm not getting discouraged because I know that uh, I'm going to spend a little more time on this and improve it before I go play. For 70%, perfect. That's right on the numbers. For the six foot drill, I take a sand wedge and I just roll it over. So I pop it in the hole and I just roll it over. If this is the line people are seeing, they're moving it above that line to give it any chance of going in the hole. That's what's happening. Let's train ourselves reading exact amount of break so that every putt truly is a straight putt. If we do that, we don't have to push or pull our putts and compensate for our misalignment or our misreading. We have to train our eyes. We'll use this device to make sure where we're starting the ball is where we think we're starting it. It'll help us aim. Then on the golf course, we will have trained our eyes so when we look up, we know exactly where we're aimed and we're going to start making more putts. We need to be able to identify this without all the help from the aids. But I know exactly what this putt does, where I need to aim, what the speed needs to be. And so I'm trying now to be able to do that without the help of all the aids. Now, I have to identify, did I miss that putt because I played too much break? or did I miss it because I hit it too hard? And obviously I hit it too hard. So I'm gonna to try to do the same putt with a little bit softer speed and see if I can get it to go back in the hole. Our goal is to get these putts inside three feet. It's the 40, 50, 60 drill where I have to hit three putts from each location all inside that three foot circle and then finish with a 10th ball from 50 feet. When I first was given this, I said nobody has ever done this. I won the 2006 Masters two months after getting this drill from Dave. Technically what we're doing, how far back do we swing? And the second is how much effort do we use going forward? We need to take one of those variables out and make it a constant. We have to keep the amount of energy that we use going forward the same and that is as much as we can without increasing grip pressure obviously. On this 50 foot putt, I'm going to try to go through as hard as I can and I'll vary only the backstroke. So you see the finish was aggressive through the ball and I hit that ball too hard. So I would have to start over and go back to a new ball. But I'm going to make a shorter backstroke with the same amount of energy going forward and now the ball went into the three foot circle. Now what this is doing is building a reference for the golf course. When I get out on the course and I have a putt of 50 feet, I now have a reference. That's why I also do it uphill and downhill because when we get out on the course, we need to have something to refer back to from our practice to help us get these putts close. Then I move up to 40 feet. The energy level going forward is the same, just as hard as I possibly can, but I shorten the backstroke. Now I'm not trying to make this, I'm trying to just get it to creep into that three foot circle and it got just past those tees. I put those tees there as a visual reference for me to know if the ball got into the circle. Now 40 feet isn't so tough, not nearly as tough as 60 feet. So I'll move all the way back here now. I'm going to have to use a little bit more backstroke obviously, but the same effort level. So the only variable is how far back I stroke. 
It's important to know that downhill putts are three putted three times more often than uphill putts. So let's spend a little bit more time refining our feel and our touch on the lag drill downhill. Now again, this is building a reference for me when I get out on the golf course. I now have a feel of what a 60 foot stroke feels like. And by eliminating one of the variables, which is how hard should I go through the ball and making it a constant, all I have to do is adjust the backstroke. And because those got in, I would just finish up here now on the 50 footer, I would drop the 10th ball. And that would also be another way where I work on pressure because this would be my last putt. I would want desperately to get this one in so I didn't have to start all over again putting from off the green. What's critical is that you don't look at the green. You've got to read the fairway. Read the fairway. I try to read the speed of it, which is why I always hit a few putts before I go play from off the green. I try to read the break and I try to get a good feel for it. I keep the same ball position. Look only at the fairway, not the green, which is going to be drastically quicker 